Hi, my name is Bob Shork. I'm the manager of the Colorado Dry Bean Committee, and I'm here today with Ed Croissant, who is a bean grower um, here in Lucerne, Colorado. And Ed, would you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you're growing beans here? Uh, I'm Ed Croissant, and uh, I grow beans in my rotation. Uh, it fits in good. I'd rather be more diversified than have one crop. It works better to have diversification because sometimes you have one crop that will be a better price and so you can get a little bit more revenue brought in that year. So other than raising straight corn, which uh, there's a lot of that around the country, and I've been diversified probably uh, out of my, well this is my 50th year of farming right now. So uh, I've been pretty much diversified all those 50 years. And we do raise sugar beets, we raise uh, corn for silage, uh, we raise the, the dry beans, and we raise onions, and we raise some seed wheat for Pioneer. And I do do some other crops. Uh, right on the other side of this bean plot is an independent uh, guy that does some research, so I lease some ground to him, and I also lease to Pioneer. So. Have all 50 years been here on this land? I've been right here for 48 years. I moved here when I was 25 years old. And what made you plant beans the first time? What was the motivation? Well, the motivation the first time I started to plant them, it was a year when uh, uh, there were good contracts out for pinto beans. It was 1980, and at that time it was better than raising uh, all corn, so we started in the bean part of it and we've been raising them ever since. Does water usage and the lack of water have any influence on how many beans you plant or why you grow beans? Uh, in this area, no. Water does not influence what I have. We have plenty of water in this location. So uh, in other areas, it probably does. Beans do not take quite as much water as the other crops, but uh, it could be a factor for some growers. And how do you determine how to uh, fertilize and use pesticides. Or what, what do you use to control uh, to grow your beans? Okay, fertilizer wise, uh, normally we put down uh, around uh, 65 pounds of an, uh, 40 of uh, uh, potash, and 20 of phosphate, and, and a little sulfur. And then when we uh, get ready to prepare the ground before planting, we come in strip till and uh, bed at the same time, and we put another 35 to 40 pounds of ant underneath the row. And that seems to give the, the beans a pretty good boost. You have to have a strong plant and foliage in order to produce pods. And you get your beans through Larry Landy, right, at Northern yeah. Feed and Bean. And, and you're growing mostly yellow beans, myocopas, is that right? I grow 100% yellow beans for Larry. And, and you buy the seed from him, and so you, you from Tess, how, how does he select his seed, do you know? Well, he's brought some different varieties out, and what we've been trying to do, find a variety that is more yellow uh, on, the, on the yellow beans, and uh, we've done that for about three, four, going on five years now, and we found a variety that uh, looks like it's going to have a better color to it. And then on the pinto bean side of it, uh, mainly to find something that is more upright than the previous varieties that we do have. Are you considering planting pintos or another variety down the road, or are you just going to stick with yellows? No, I'll probably stay with yellows. I like yellow beans. Uh, they're, they're a challenge. So. And, and Larry's not here, but what's the primary market? Where does Larry, do you know where Larry sells his yellow beans to? Well, a lot of his yellow beans go to Southern California and uh, into Mexico. And my understanding, too, they opened a market here two years ago back in the Chicago area. So that's where the majority of them go to. Okay. So I have been told there's a store in West Greeley. Uh, can't remember of it, the name of the grocery store. Uh, the yellow store, I think. And they do have uh, some yellow beans in there because they have a lot of lat Latino clients. And the Latino people like the yellow beans. And if you need to know what I use for uh, herbicide, Wood -like. I usually put on a herbicide. I use a pint and a half of Dual, and I use two quarts of uh, Eptem. And that's incorporated 
right immediately. And, and then uh, we spray twice a year a fungicide. This field here, uh, that's how it looks. There have been a few couple weeds sticking up here and there, and uh, I've had some help come out and pull them out. But I don't think they spent but a half a day cleaning what was out here. What are your pathology resources if you have a problem? How, how do you handle do you, do you know enough from all these years of what to treat it with, or do you go somewhere else? Well, I know some, but I also have uh, uh, personnel from Crop Air that they come out and scout the fields weekly. And then they can find things that I have not seen because I can't spend all my time in the fields. i got to do other th stuff to keep the operation running, look after help, and also irrigate and whatnot. And how are you irrigating your fields? Uh, this particular field is irrigated with siphon tubes, flood irrigated, furrow irrigated. And we do have some linear irrigation, so under sprinklers. Uh, I do have some beans this year that are under the linears too. Uh, when this type of the time of the year comes, uh, especially if we have wind and you have a heavy canopy of beans going, uh, if they're not a real strong upright plant, they will start to lodge and go down. So then you have trouble getting your water down on flood irrigation, whereas under sprinklers, you have no problems. Other than that, uh, that's about it. What, and can you tell non-farmers what crop rotation means and what crops you're rotating through well, if you're growing sugar beets too? Well, I, I rotate with, uh, I raise onions, I raise sugar beets, I raise silage corn, we have some filled corn. And uh, we have the beans, and I do do some uh, leasing out of the ground to uh, Pioneer uh, for s some of their research, and, and an independent fellow over at Fort Collins. Uh, we try to stay on at least a three to four year rotation between, between the crops. So we can follow year after year with corn, but especially pinto beans, they don't work year after year you get too, too much disease pressure. And uh, from a layman's standpoint, we hear that uh, beans are a soil fixer. Is that true? Do they leave more nitrogen than they take out? And is that good for the following crop that rotates through? Yes, it is. I like to follow with either onions or beets, but the problem with following with beets after a, a bean crop, uh, you can pick up too much rhizoc into your sugar beets because uh, beans, they will, if you have them not in a long rotation, they will leave a field with a uh, disease that carries the rhizoc. So uh, we, we try not to follow with sugar beets normally, but some years we just have to follow. I've followed this past season with uh, some sugar beets. We've had no problem. Just don't do it too often. Gotcha. And for farm economics, how, how do beans rate as far as profitability to you as a farmer? When you consider the input cost, seed cost, and everything else, do they... Does it come out the same as other crops? Is it better? Uh, well, well, the past few years here, you know the corn market is not that great. So the beans have been more profitable to me because you don't have as much input put into them as you do the other crops. Uh, corn, you're running about the same as you would sugar beets for input. So but beans are probably couple hundred bucks an acre less. And you're, you're, are your yellow beans, what, 95 days, not, not high 90s? No, they're going to run probably about 110. 110? Yes, right in that area. And that yeah. works well for this climate? Yeah, it does. Uh, if you get them planted early enough, you know, you don't want to plant into June. You want to get them planted before that. M middle of May, tail end of May is ideal time. Also, uh, maturity on uh, uh, the beans also is determined by how much nitrate you have put in. The more nitrate, it's going to delay them a little bit longer. So they can become 114, 15, 16 day. So. And, and during the winter, do you how, how do you decide what what you're going to grow? Do you, do, do you look at the economics and the prices, or are you always going to be growing beans because you, you like beans, or, or do you buy grow more in, in cycles? No, I don't. I don't switch from year to year. I keep everything the same number of acres of each crop every year. So that way your rotation, you can control it better. I don't like to jump back and forth. Let's say one year not have beans and have all corn. Sometimes that gets you into trouble. You should have stayed with the beans. Could have had a good bean year.
And I'm sure Larry reminds you that, doesn't he? If, if you yeah, take I mean, a the price is good. <laughs> no, I I stay basically the same all the time. So we keep uh, the same acres of every crop. And that's your diversification then too, right? As yeah. prices uh, go up and down by crop, you, know, you got to take some some crops are going to be lower in price. You know, they may come up in price by time harvest time comes around. So you might have missed that window. So if you have a rotation of uh, four different crops, it just works that much better. And how do you decide, because when you take the beans to Northern Feed and Bean, you can sell them across the scale or you can store them, correct? It's your, is that your choice? Uh, no, these, these are already on the yellow beans. Uh, when they go to Larry, they're basically Larry's beans and my beans. Uh, we have a floor on them and uh, we get paid in three different payments. So you don't have to decide whether you're going to sell today, next month, or, or not at whatever the price is? No. No, that's already determined by the floor. The floor may go up, and uh, we might get paid more for our beans then. We sell a third of the crop. It goes in in November, third crop January. The other third uh, comes out in April. And does Larry give you a different floor every year? Is that, is that negotiable, or how, how does that work? Well, sometimes we've got to get a little cranky with them to get a good floor. So, But, yeah, we negotiate every year. There's a different floor. Okay. And the difference between a floor and contracted beans is contracted beans, is it's set right there, right? You know, you know before you plant what you're going to get. Yes. Contracted set, you don't have no opportunity for to gain on price, whereas with the floor, we get a take in the ups if the price goes up. Yes, some upside potential. And and contracts were big in the 80s, weren't they, for for bean growers? And then in recent years, there were no contracts, right? And that's just because of the economics and pricing of the the industry? Right. At least there haven't been contracts around in this area. There could be in other states. Yeah, yes. But in this area, no.